So hi, everybody. Today we have Angela Thurman in the house. Um, Angela um, is, a, is the Principal Managing Director at Thurman Co. LLC. Uh, she uh, provides technical consulting for project management, uh, process improvement, supplier and tool assessment, continuous improvement projects, and contract analysis and management over 25 years of experience, Angela. In the aerospace, defense, yes. telecom, and power sectors, she has a proven track record of delivering complex and high-value programs and contracts for clients such as Collins Aerospace, Boeing, Airbus, and Sprint. Angela, we're so excited to have you with us today. Oh, well, thank you, Dawes. It's my pleasure to be here. So, like, um, I'm sure, like, you'll have a lot of clients who want to know more about your, you know, mission and vision in life, people who are about to become your clients, they want to know about like, you know, how they can actually connect with you. So my first, you know, I was very curious about asking you, like, what makes you fall in love uh, with the project management practice? <laughs> so um, I'm an electrical engineer. And uh, my, uh, my first, uh, my first job, uh, was as a, an electrical engineer uh, for the space station programs uh, at NASA Lewis Research Center, which is now NASA Glenn in Cleveland, Ohio. And in that role, I was responsible for managing the design and development of uh, devices that would eventually fly on the space station, in, in particular, load converters. So. Um, converting uh, DC power to AC power. And so I worked with a couple of, you know, very well-known uh, uh, companies, TRW and Westinghouse to develop and, and um, test prototype equipment. So I was actually acting as a project manager um, for that um, for in that role. So managing the budget, the schedule, the requirements, um, although my title was uh, electrical engineer. So I was the task manager for you know the tasks in the integrated project uh, plan for these um, these elements for the space station. So um, because NASA Lewis uh, is in Cleveland, or now NASA Glenn uh, is in Cleveland, we had the luxury, the real blessing of having project management training by Dr. Harold Kersner, who was teaching at Baldwin oh, Wallace College wow. in nearby Berea. So NASA would actually bring Dr. Kersner um, into the lab to teach all the engineers project management training. And so that was really my first introduction to formal project management training. So I, I was inducted into project management very early in my career. And I just felt like, you know, this is really something I enjoy. I like, I like the schedule. I like tracking all of the, of, of the tasks and, and uh, working with my partners, my teammates, um, in in project management, and so that's kind of how my whole career has developed. How does that make? How did that make you feel back then? How did that trigger that kind of spark? Well, it just resonated with me, and at the time, I didn't know who he was, <laughs> and you know, it was just this local, you know, university professor coming to teach us something, right? And then it was years later that I, you know recognized who he was and began to appreciate how valuable that training was. Obviously, yeah, absolutely. Like, what do they call him? The father of project management? He is. Exactly. His celebrity yes. figure when it comes to project management, Dr. Krizner. Wow. Yes. So it sort of resonated with your kind of personality, your, like, what part really resonated with you, Angela? <laughs> what did you particularly love about, you know, budgets? Well, you know, scheduling, like what really got you? Well, um, 
my uh, my branch chief also assigned me. I mean, he recognized something in me, I'm sure, but he assigned me to do all of the um, um, cost and schedule reports for our entire branch. So, um, so you know, SPI, CPI reports for all of the branch and all of the work of my teammates and and to report on those every month. So so that also gave me some face time with the leaders of the of the directorate. And um yeah, I because I it's just part of my personality. I really like, you know, as a kid I liked, you know, or in school, you know, I liked calendars. I was one of those kids in college that, you know, that had a calendar and and recorded like when all my assignments are due and I was tracking due dates, even in college, just personally. And everything in my life is color coded. <laughs> it's beautiful. I love it. So yeah, 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 yeah. Um, even, I mean, I'm a highly organized person, just just, just the kind of person I love. Uh, I, I love being organized. In fact, um, at one point in my life, everything in my cupboard was in... Um, in Tupperware with um, matching seals. And and I mean, my, my little brother came in one day and he looked at my cupboard and he's like, Ange, you can get help for this. <laughs> Actually can be of help if you help everybody yeah. business like, like this. Yes. It's I'm like, like, this is the way it should be. I can help other people. Yeah. Yeah. It, it gives you the sense, you know, when you're really with organized people, it makes, you know, like somebody who can eliminate chaos, somebody who can really, you can rely on to take care of things, things will be in control. That's a beautiful blessing. Who wouldn't want that? Yeah, that's going to be on my tombstone. Stone. She was reliable. <laughs> After so many, 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 many years. All right. <laughs> so what do you find attractive about the manufacturing and aerospace industry? I noticed you always, you know, uh, talk about the manufacturing and uh, leaders in the manufacturing, especially women leaders in the manufacturing and aerospace. It seems mm -hmm. to me like you're specifically attracted to these two industries. Why so? Mm -hmm. Well, while my company is is you know willing to help any uh, organization that needs project management help, um, you know we've done a lot of software uh, projects, uh, implementation um, projects. I am attracted to manufacturing because I really think that that is the the backbone of our economy. It, you know, we need to be makers of things and support um, so to support our economy that way. And um, so that's always been attractive to me. And then I also like the highly regulated industries like aerospace and automotive uh, biopharma, telecom, for example, because um, because there is so much detail involved. And while that is um, that's scary to a lot of people, it intrigues me. And for example, with aerospace, there are so many rules and regulations, and you have to follow all of these detailed rules to be successful. And for for me, just keeping track of all of the rules and making sure that you've checked all the boxes and change management in a highly regulated industry is exceptionally important. Um, in aerospace, for example, you know people's lives are at stake if you don't follow the rules, and um, so I really enjoy that. Details it, it's, are so um, intriguing. It's a challenge. Yeah. Yeah. Because for so many people, like you said, they can be too overwhelming. And when you mm -hmm. specifically enjoy details, mm -hmm. it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. It becomes like it sort of becomes energizing to you in a way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Especially when you get it right. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so um, now what is your take? I mean, given the many, many industries, many, many leaders, world-class leaders who you've worked with, spe specifically in the U.S. Like, what's your take on how far we're achieving on project management in terms of the evolution of project management in corporations? I think 
that I think that it well it bothers me <laughs> when people uh, claim to be a project manager. There are some people say, saying I'm a project manager. I'm a project manager, and I just want to say, oh really? Well, tell me this, you know. Um, and um, the project management is is almost an art form to get it right, and it, to you um, b being a being able to to master a schedule, being able to um, you know to to track um, track a you have to be more than just a scheduler to be a project manager. So you have to understand the the interest, intricacies of of uh, dependencies, for example, and you have to be able to understand risk. And if I do this, how does that affect my stakeholders in these other areas? And you certainly have to be able to understand the requirements, the objectives of the project that you're you're working in. And change is huge. If it weren't for change, you wouldn't even have a project because your project is is introducing some kind of change. And you have to understand how that change is going to affect a number of people. It's not just your own team, but probably it'll have a ripple effect to a number of other users and teams. Um, and so I think that project managers have to think strategically as well as on the details. And that takes that takes a lot of bandwidth. And so um, I, I, um, I sort of object to this practice of some companies when a project comes up, they just they just hand it off to the next available body. And that's unfortunate because oftentimes those people aren't trained in project management. They didn't want to have this project thrown at them and they just do the best that they can, which is admirable for them. But it's unfortunate that the outcome of that project may not be the best that it could be. What should they do instead of just pulling well, somebody who's like high, I mean, high at the technical and yeah, then giving yeah. them the title? What is the right practice? Instead of doing the, that, <laughs> the right thing would be to actually hire project managers, and whether that is um, internally having you know actually hiring full time project managers in their company, or hiring a consultant like me to come in and work that project for them, and that's that's why I established my company is to be able to come in and fill that gap for the small to medium sized companies who don't have a full-time project management organization. So it's not just about, you know, being able to manage a schedule. It's and not even like about all the details at the back end. Yeah. It's reading in between the lines, being foresighted, um, seeing what's behind the scene, understanding the psychology of people, politics, yes. political aspects yes. in a corporation, resistance, allies, mm -hmm. enemies. And like when they say, sure, I'm going to be doing this plan. What does that really mean? <laughs> yes, yes. I mean, I don't think that your average engineer, as talented and smart and gifted as they are, are immediately going to think, okay, I need to pull together a team, have a kickoff meeting, um, you know, write a project charter, make sure I'm fully funded and authorized. You know, that's not where their brain goes. Uh, yeah. I'm an engineer. I know this. <laughs> so, you know, the first thing they're going to think about is I better, you know, read the requirements. I doubt that they're even going to think about writing a statement of work. That might be uh, one thing they uh, would think about. Uh, you know, maybe they'll think about that, but, you know, 
they're probably going to go right to the action of creating a schedule. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and I think it, it's pretty fair to say a lot of engineers are introverts like I am. So they're not likely to recognize how broad their project can reach and who all of the stakeholders may be. Yeah. Over time, they may, you know, realize that someone's affected and add them to the team. I know that's, you know, in in um, my early days of project management, that's kind of how I operated before I was trained. But, uh, you know, so it's a um, learn as you go kind of thing, learning yeah. on the job. It's like improving your peripheral vision, your leadership yes. skills. Yes, yes. It comes with time. That's it. Yeah, but I've worked with a lot of engineers who have been thrown into the role of project management, and they usually resent it. Mm. At least that's been my experience. Why, why so, they Angela? Would, because they would rather be doing their real job of engineering than this other job, which pulls them out of their comfort zone. And if they're in pain, that's going to resonate, right? That's yes. going to filter through with the entire team. Absolutely. Yes. I can imagine. Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. So um, so like the way for them to improve and to evolve in a with a faster speed is to actually go to the people who have, you know, been into the industry, have hit a lot of walls, know what's mm -hmm. going to be happening. That's not in the documents. Yes. How they can actually like fast, fast track and mm -hmm. save themselves a lot of failure and mm -hmm. disappointments mm -hmm. and frustrations. I agree mm -hmm. with that, absolutely. So uh, how can you actually, you, I mean, through um, Thurman Coke, how can you leverage this technically today? Well, one way is that in my, in my company, I have PMs from different um, industries. And so, um, so I may I may have a PM that is particularly um, gifted with working in digital transformation projects, ERP pro projects, CRM projects, and and that's where he feels very comfortable. And then another PM that particularly likes construction projects, um, whether it's building construction projects, road construction projects. Um, other types of um, totally different infrastructure. mindset. Totally different mindset. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And then, and then me, of course, I like uh, uh, new product introduction. Um, anything to do with uh, manufacturing, um, and so you you kind of look for the people. Not not that that it makes a, a a big difference. I mean, I I believe that project management is industry agnostic, and that you come in with a toolkit and you apply those skill sets to whatever industry you're in. Mm -hmm. But it does help a little bit if you have the jargon and and so forth for the for the project that you're you're going to be working on. Yeah, I, so I, um, I think that that's that's one thing that you can do. So finding people or helping other companies through people who are actually who come from this particular background, know the intricacies of what's going to be going on, the psychology of the entire matter, can actually forecast mm -hmm. things based on real mm -hmm. experience, not just. Mm -hmm. And when I say just, that's not you know, taking away anything from project management, but not just project management knowledge, but it's industry know-how as well. That's huge. Yes, I think so. Because you can also be a little bit uh, better versed as far as knowing what sort of risks to anticipate. Yeah. yeah, I think that will help. Yeah, and speaking their language too. Yes, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And and um, so like, what is your dream for the world, Angela? <laughs> oh goodness. <clears throat> well, 
Well, I think that um, for the world, that's a very big question. Um, from from a from particularly you know a project management perspective, I would like to see you know everyone be able to apply project management uh, theory to to their lives. I mean, and I think that we that we do, we don't always realize it. So I use these examples all the time when I'm talking about project management because. People oftentimes ask me, what does a project manager do? And I'm like, you use project management every day and you don't even realize it because planning dinner, making dinner is a project. Um, planning your vacation is, is, is a project and a birthday party is, is a project. So you don't even realize that you're going through all the phases of project of man of managing a project when when you're <clears throat> initiating planning executing monitoring and controlling mm -hmm. and closing the 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 steps of your child's birthday party but that it that is what you're doing and the same thing with with making dinner so um and that usually surprises people but but then they're like yeah you're right that's what that I do do that and um so it brings it down you know down to the level of you know every person and helps them understand a little bit um you know so just using the waterfall method there here so um I think that if we if we helped people better understand what project management is, number one, we might have more people interested in choosing project management as a career choice, which I think would be awesome. Mm -hmm. We might also have people, <coughs> pardon me, more people understand why they need project managers on their team and the value that a project manager brings to the team. And um, and that, yeah, I think that that would just be really great. And also, if you give some, uh, case, some um, examples, some cases of how a project manager can help a, a project recover when one, you know, is in in uh, bad a bad situation, it's like this is how I can help you recover, or how how a project could have gone one of you know one of two ways. It could have failed or succeeded mm -hmm. um, simply because you had a project manager. Um, they'll appreciate more the value that a project manager brings. So my my vision, if you will. Um, which is, would just be that people understand the role of a project manager and appreciate the value of a project manager. Going deeper into, into your dream, Angela, what mm -hmm. kind of difference would it create on the corporate and on the individual level in the way people experience life itself? For everyday mm -hmm. work, how how will that? I mean, what kind of difference is that going to create? Are you looking forward to creating that? Well, I, well, I think um, too often, especially in 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 a corporate setting, you know, the project manager doesn't have any real authority over their team because the team doesn't directly um, report to the project manager in most cases. Um, and so the project manager, at least when I was in that role, the project manager oftentimes um, feels um, undervalued. I mean, because I had difficulty sometimes in, in some of my teams, if um, let's say a, a team member was very, very busy, you know, you've got a lot of, a lot of irons in the fire, you're very busy this week, 
So the team member would, would choose to not attend my meeting, my cadence meeting, because it was, it was deemed less important than my real job. And I would like to change that so that, um, <clears throat> so that the, the project cadence meetings would be considered just as important as the other work that the team member's manager had also assigned to be done. So that would be one thing. And another thing would be that if a person was assigned to various projects, in addition to the work that the manager had assigned, that at the time of say quarterly or semi-annual or annual evaluations, that the project manager would have the opportunity to provide input on that person's um, performance. Because a lot of a lot of the um, the project manager would have uh, significant input on, you know, how did that how did that person perform on this project? Because that I think that that's important. Because very rarely was I consulted on on a, on an individual's performance in one of my projects, regardless of crazy. how Isn't critical. That I mean, is that, is, I mean, it does, is. That make sense? It is. does that make sense? Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. yeah, because, you know, I could be on some, you know, some projects, I mean, that were critical to the business operation. And no one ever asked me, how did, how did your teammates perform? That seems like a missed opportunity. Why, why would they? Yeah, exactly. Because like for for one, maybe their functional manager or whoever is like, you know, mm -hmm. their boss is, are, they're not recognizing, you know, skills mm -hmm. or talents that this person has when you will. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then for, for, for the second thing would be like, why would they even pay attention to somebody who's not going to be able to give feedback on their performance? Mm -hmm. That's so mm -hmm. unfair. Mm -hmm to any project manager. Well, I mean, I would usually take the initiative to let the functional manager know, look, this person showed up for every meeting. They were an absolute rock star. They delivered everything I asked for, you know, bam, bam, bam. Yeah. If if we consider there is a, you know, a, a situation where project managers, qualified project managers are hired in the right space, taking mm -hmm. care of everything, and you know, our and project management is becoming a part of you know people's awareness. Mm -hmm. How kind of change could that you know um, cause on people the way people feel when they wake up in the morning, or like when they go to work, or when they get back mm -hmm. home? Mm -hmm. I think that that's that's an important question because most of the project managers that that I that I know, oftentimes. Um, feel undervalued and and they have a lot more projects than than they can manage in in a typical uh work day or work week and so um many of the project managers that i know work a lot of hours just to manage their current work workload and there's the companies usually have a lot of other projects in the in the pipeline that they're ready to assign, you know, as soon as possible. Regardless, regardless of whether it mm -hmm. makes sense. And mm -hmm. and that takes away the opportunity of them actually teaching the rest of the team new stuff and mm -hmm. helping them build their muscle mm -hmm. and leadership, mm -hmm. communication, team building, because they're doing everything mm -hmm. in that sense. Mm -hmm. So it's not going mm -hmm. to be just like impacting the project manager's lives and, and, and making them feel more appreciated, but it's going to, you think it's, it's going to be influencing everybody else's life who's surrounding them in the company. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and um, other, you know, I've, uh, other teammates, um, you know, they, they, um, they can, they can sometimes, um, 
dread, <laughs> dread attending the cadence meetings, especially if tasks have not been completed. You know, they don't want to come to the meeting and report, no, I didn't complete my tasks mm -hmm. because they feel like they're going to be chastised for not nice. getting the work done. Yeah. Well, it's not, it's, it's like, well, why, you know, what, instead of saying, well, why didn't you get the work done? You know, the project manager has to say, what, you know, what, what inhibited, what caused you to not, you know, do, do you need more resources? Um, do I need to talk to your functional manager about allowing you time to work on this project? You know, the, the project manager has to be the champion for the project, including um, being a champion for the team members, right? Yeah, so, removing impediments. Removing impediments, exactly. So it's important w when you're in a situation like that for the project to be successful, the team members need to recognize that the project manager is, is not only their leader for that project, but their, their friend and their champion. And if you're having problems, whatever that may be, I'm, I'm here to help you be successful, but you have to tell me what are the roadblocks? What are the impediments? Absolutely. And if you don't show up, if you don't show up to the meeting to tell me what your problems are, I can't help you. Yeah. Yeah. That needs like a lot of, you know, <laughs> from everybody around the project manager and the high level people in the company in mm -hmm. recognizing these people. And um, mm -hmm. because like if they help these project managers, like you said, it's going to be a ripple effect. Everybody's going to feel better. Mm -hmm. All the teams will feel better. It's not just about the project manager. Yes. I mean, they're going to be able to energize everybody else. So everybody right. wins. Right. Motivate. Yeah. motivate because i think that's a very important um function of the project manager is motivating the team absolutely yeah inspiring motivating motivating them like mm -hmm. his leader or her leadership skills absolutely mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. on spot so in that sense yeah. um who would you like everybody in the profession angela or how would you like everybody in the profession to envision you and recognize you Yes. Um, so I am, I am, uh, I, I love project management. I just absolutely love, you know, bringing a team together. For me, uh, throughout my career, it's mostly been um, remote teams, uh, which has been, you know, a challenge in itself. But um, yeah, I, I would like to have people recognize me as, you know, a, prof a really, you know, a professional. I, I, I have all of these resources and tools in my toolkit, right? And if I don't know the answer, I will work really hard to get the answer. And I'm not afraid to say, you know, that's a good question. I don't know the answer right now, but I will do my best to find out. And um, I probably, I hold people accountable, but more than anything, I hold myself accountable. And ultimately the success of the project is on my shoulders. Um, I think that that probably is the way I would want people to in you know to think of me that you're going to be able to take care of, of this yeah handle this you're the go-to person mm -hmm. on this yeah absolutely she she was responsible <laughs> we, we we can we can let her take care of this and not worry about anything because she's gonna be able yeah. to take care of it well yeah wow that's a big mission now i mean before before we wrap up like what is if you, if there was a thing that you would want to whisper into mm -hmm. the ear of every decision maker mm -hmm. who is responsible for their organization's 
-hmm. project management or project management offices. And you just want to mm -hmm. whisper that piece of advice into their ear. Mm -hmm. What would you say? Oh, my goodness. Um, I would say... Lessons learned. Yeah. Look at the lessons learned so that you don't repeat prior mistakes. Yeah, because I see I see so many companies repeating the same mistake over and over and over. Whether it's fail failing to um, mitigate risks or even acknowledge that risk exists. I see so many schedules that are built around perfect performance without any any um, acknowledgement that there may be a risk or a, you know delays may happen um, of course yeah it's like oh yeah we're gonna meet our due date if